Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we've got a felted VW Beetle made from a sweater. Let's get started. I've got the body of the car done. I've just sculpted it to the shape. I'm using this as my model. I'm going to cover the body with yellow. I'm going to bring my pattern back. And I'm just going to outline the body. Front and back. I think I want to add just a little bit more fiber on the back. So I've got my shape. Now I'm just going to fold I'm just going to felt around the edges so that I get a clean line. Then I just want to gently lift this up. Just get around the edges. it a bit. Okay, so now it's going to be ready to go onto the car. I'm going to have to give it a bit of a stretch and felt it in. And to stretch things out, I'm just going to take a darning needle and just put it where I want it. That's pretty good. That'll be good at the back. I'm just going to start where the window would be. Tack it in. So now that's in place. Now we're going to go ahead and do the sides. I'm going to cover the sides of the car now. So I'm just going to split this in two. Put one aside. And again, I'm just going to punch in the shape. Just watch your fingers as you go. And I'm just outlining right around the shape of the side.
And then as we did before, I'm just going to fold it into the center and then apply it onto the car. Okay. I'm just going to see where I'm at here. I don't think I'm going to bother with the wheel wells just yet. I think I might just do that right on the car. Well, let's just see how this goes. So I'm going to do this for the other side because I'm going to have the rough side in. And I'm just going to follow the lines and tack it on. And again, if there's anything you need to stretch, just use the darning needle just to put the fibers where you want them. So I'm tacking in just at the bottom of the door here. And then I'm just going to poke to and from each side to blend the seam. Just got a stray bit of fiber in there that I'm going to pull out. And that's what's great about the darning needle. And again, I'm going to pull the fibers to where I want them. and then tack in on the seam.
So I've got the yellow on the body of the car and now I'm going to be doing the hood. So I've got my pattern pieces in place. I'm just taking small bits of the felt and I'm just going to roll it into more of a tubular shape. Just by friction. I've already done this side and on this side I'm just going around the perimeter and meeting in the middle. So I'm just stabbing it in around the perimeter. just to get it in. Then I'll come around the corner. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to come back and then finesse it after. We're going to remove the pattern and then we're going to just neaten up the edges. Okay, I'm going to finish this off camera and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we neaten the edges up. So I've got roving on around the perimeter and so now I'm just going to lift my pattern and I just want to tuck under around the edges. I don't want to flatten anything, I'm just pushing it outward and tacking it in all the way around. And as you can see, I've got the hood ornamentation. At this stage, I want to add the windshield before I get any further. Actually, I'm going to start again. It's just a bit too long. That's the great thing about felt, is that if you make a mistake, you can just start over. Let's see how that's going to work. Okay, I'm liking that better. I'm going to start again. Smooth it out. And we're going to outline it once again. Okay, I think what I'll do is bring the sides in first. And then just feel for where you've got that line so you can get the shape. And I'm just taking very shallow stabs here just to felt in the ends. Actually, I'm going to redefine this just a bit. I'll just pull away a little bit of that extra. And 
and fold that up. And again, just taking shallow jabs. So I'm going to put my pattern back. Just refine it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to lift it. And this will be the front. I'm just going to bring in all these edges. And just clean it up. And again, you can put your pattern back and just make sure that you're keeping the shape. So here I'm using the actual pattern piece to further finesse the edges on this window. I'm just going to place that on. And then you just want to tuck it underneath. Bring the edges in. And that'll be the right side. And that'll get attached there. And then for positioning, I'll take these off. I'll just bring my pattern back. And then lay it on there. And you can pin it if you like. And then you can lay that right on. Just tack it in. And once it's in place, you can remove this and then felt it in. With the window in place, I'm going to stab the fibers down, downward into the body of the car to hold it. I'm going to further finesse this. I'll just tack in the corners so I know where they are. Now I can remove the pattern. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up the yellow on the hood where this raised area is. I don't know if you can see that because this is white, but I'm just going to build it up right along here. And I'll just take some of the yellow and just lay it in there and build it. And this is where I'm going to build up around the relief. We did previously. And this is still only rough. I'm going to further finesse this as I go. Still, need, still needs a lot of shaping. It's getting a little fat. So um, we'll be bringing that all in as we go. 
But you can't needle felt everything at once because you still need the fibers fluffy. So the hood of the car is coming along. And now what I'm doing is putting a piece of roving around the window in the same way I did the relief around the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you when it's done. I'm going to put a piece of black roving onto the roof. This is a cabriolet. And I'm drawing my line. And I'm going to fold it up. I'm doing this off to the side because I don't want to contaminate the rest of my workspace with black. Okay, so I'll lift that off and then I'll just tack that underneath just with very shallow stabs. So this line is going to be just above the window. So I'm going to line it up and then tack it down. And just check where you're at. That looks pretty good. So this tail, I can just fold it back. And tack it in. And then I'll bring this back. And then just use the pattern to put the roving where you want it. So on that side it's going to be there. Oops, telephone. So I'm going to do this off camera and I'll be back. So the black of the roof is now on. And what I'm going to do now is the back window. See if I can find my little window piece. I think that's it. No, nope, that's the front. Well, it doesn't matter. You can use either pattern. Let's just make sure I have it even here. I'm just going to pin it down. And I'm just tearing and stacking just to get the shape. I'll do it as I did for the um, front window. I'll just outline it, fold it in, tuck in all the edges, and then I'll apply it right on. 
So here I'm preparing the window. I'm just going to eyeball it. I've already folded in the two long edges. And now I'll fold in the sides. Just pull off whatever you don't need. and then just tack it down. And just flatten it out. Now before it gets totally embedded, just lift it up and then continue to flatten. And on the right side, just neaten up these edges all the way around. And watch your fingers as you go. This isn't too bad. By the time you felt it in, it's going to be smaller anyways. Okay, I'm just going to pop it right on there and use the template as a guideline to felt it in. So I've just tacked it in the corners and I'm going to continue all the way around tuck it here in this corner and this one and then I can just go around the perimeter and just tack in just the smallest amount of fiber to get the shape And then turn the work over and do the same thing on the underside. And make sure you define the corners because when you take the pattern off, you'll know how to further finesse it. And so this can come off. We can lift this. And then we'll just further tack that down and just get rid of all these wisps. So once that's done, I'm going to continue to do the side windows the same as I did the front and the back and get those on. And then we'll be able to sculpt the wheel wells and get these in position and it uh, looks like we're getting there and there's the original underbelly I used a piece of old sweater to mold the shape once everything's in we can tighten up the rest of the roving and really shape it if you don't like the shape of something just take your darning needle and just pull the wool where you want it and then tack it in. 
So, on the bottom here, I've got this nice curved shape at the bottom of the roof. I'm just going to add a piece of roving so I can get that bottom piece. And I'm just going to eyeball it, tack it in. And then I'll give the outer edge a curve. And turn it around and do the same with the other side. As you go around, just make sure you know the shape of what you're trying to create, and then just attack the wool from the direction you want to shape it. So I'm trying to achieve this curve, and by drawing the threads in, we're going to create that curve shape here. So I'm going to continue this and we'll be back soon. Here's where we're at so far. We've got the windows on this side, the front, the back. We've got half the roof done. Still have to fill in the roof after we complete the windows on this other side. So we're going to make another two windows for the side with the grey roving. So just take the fibers and just pull them. And put them back together and create the shape that you want. Put the pattern piece down and then stab around the perimeter. Remove the pattern piece and that's a lot better. You can see you've got your shape there. Fold it in, tack it down, And now the last side. Now 
I'll pull it up and just tuck in all these wispy ends. Flip it. And that'll be the right side. Now I don't know if you noticed, but I use the opposite pattern because we're flipping it on to the other side. And attaching it. So I'm just going to clean up the wisps around these edges. And what you can do, that's the right side of the pattern. I'm going to put it face down because that's going to be our right side. And just tuck in around the edges, get all those wisps in. Flip the piece around. Okay, it's not perfect. <clears throat> but it doesn't have to be because you still want the edges to be fluffy. Now I'm going to take my pattern and just lay it over. As you can see, the shape has grown. It's a little wider and it started out. But as it felt, that'll all come back in. Okay, so that's where we want to be. So I'm going to take some pins. Actually, I'll just take the darning needle and stick it in there just to hold it. And then we'll put our pattern piece right in. Now you can pin it down or you can just come in and tack at the corners just to hold it. And that'll hold it in place for you. And now we can come in and tuck those wisps in along the outline, all the way around. And then we'll get our precise shape. And everything gets tucked in. So you don't want the piece to be too perfect because it's those wispy ends that are gonna felt into the body of the car. So I'm going to leave that on so that I can create my second window. Um, might as well because then you could lose the placement. And I'll set that aside. And then I'll do this little guy and tack it in. So now I've got this second window in place and I've put a few more pins into the pattern just to keep it secure. You can remove the pattern. So as you can see here, the black is filled in on this side, and I'm going to do the same here. Take it around to the back, as I did here. So I'm going to do that off camera, and then when we're back, we have to complete the wheels, we have to do the front and back fenders, right here, and then finesse with the little details like the headlight, the bumper, tail lights. So the windows are now in place and we're going to start at the back and we're going to fill in right along here. I've got my piece of black. I'm going to start at this corner and you just want to fan out 
the roving. And then we're going to create our line by coming across here. To help you, you might want to lay your needle across there so you know where you're aiming for. And then just follow that line across and just draw your line. Now here I'm just going to come along and just temp that in. Now coming back here Just going to create that line, that curved line, and just lay it down. And we'll catch the end of that as we come around again this way. So follow the line of your windows, as we did on this side. And we're just going to blend those fibers together. So somehow, my windows on the other side ended up smaller than that side. It's looking odd to me. As you can see, I overworked it. So I just want to show you that you can pull up work that you've already done. I'm going to leave that there because when I fix these windows, we'll just be reusing that. So I don't know if we can pull this out. I think they're too well attached, but we can add to it to fill this in. So that's what I'm going to do and then we'll be back on track. So I'm going to place my pattern piece back over and as it turns out this front one isn't too bad. It just got over felted. So what I'm going to do is take the darning needle and just pull it into the shape I want. And then I'll just secure it at the corner here. And I'll just continue to pull until I feel like I've got it even with the other side. And once you're happy, you can just felt it back down. Now I feel like this one is just a little bit skimpy on the corner here. So I'm just going to add a little bit and I'll just reshape it to the way I want.
And again, you can use your needle to pull the fiber to where you want it. And then just check it against your pattern. Just keep finessing until you get the shape. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. And I'm going to re-felt in this black and finish that off. I've attached my pattern just through the roof and through the end of the trunk here. I'm just going to lay that down and then take my needle and stab through to get the outline of that. And what I'll end up doing is adding some roving to add the detail and to sculpt that a bit more. So I'm going to do that off camera. So what I'm doing here is just ensuring that I don't have any white streaks. I used a golden yellow and a white just to get this buttery creamy color. If I pull this you can see the strands of both. Just want to get it well blended. Try to get two roughly equal pieces. So I'm going back to my original pattern. What I'm going to do is outline this and then fold it in the middle. So I'm going to start right here in the middle. That's my corner. And I'm going to flip that over and outline it again on the other side. What I'm going to do is cut right on the line here, cut away the shape so I can get a clean edge. And make sure you have the center line well outlined. Flip it over so that you have the mirror image. I'll just get rid of this outer part. I'm not going to need it all. Okay, now that you have the shape, I'm just going to fold right along the lines. Fold in here. And I'm just tacking right into the middle. Don't want to do the edges because I want to keep them fluffy because that's what's going to go onto the car right along there. And so you don't want to felt those. Fold that in. Tack that down. And then fold that. Okay, so now we've got our mirror image. Then I'll just lift that up. And as you can see, I'll fold that right over. And that's the shape that we're going to felt onto the car. So I think I'll start with the left side. So I'm going to felt this a little more just to keep it together, but basically
that's going to be my shape. So from underneath, I'm just going to felt this lightly to tack it in and bring it together into one cohesive piece. And I'm just taking shallow stabs just so it doesn't pop apart on me when I'm working with it. And that's the right side, nice and fluffy. We're going to pin it in place and essentially we're going to felt right along this seam all the way around. And I think we're going to end up with what we need here. So before we actually attach this piece, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, because we're going to maintain this shape and it's going to be a little difficult to felt it once it's on, I'm just going to come along and I don't know if you can see these wispy edges but it's much easier to do it flat while it's on here. So I'm just going to come along and just tuck those in to neaten the edge. Because those aren't going to remain fluffy at all. We want a nice clean line. And again, along here. And just continue doing this until you're happy with the clean edge that you achieve. We'll still be touching up a little bit once it's on the car. But you can do most of the work right here. And that's just a lot better. So that's going to come right along, go right around here, and attach right to there. So I want the bottom edge level with the fender. You can overlap it slightly, and I'm going to pin it into place. and pin right onto the edge here. Check where you're pinning into just by lifting it up and seeing where you're at. Oops, don't want to get your pin upside down. And then you're going to come right around. My battery ran out, as sometimes happens. Well, not my battery, but the camera. My battery's still going. So I just want to show you that I have it pinned right around the line where I want to felt it in. And those pins are holding it. And then this will eventually all get felted in together. So that we end up with that shape. And just looking at it now, I'll probably bring that up and over. I've tacked it in the back and tacked it in the front. And essentially, I'm just going to come along on that line and just fold the pins and just come along and tack it in on that line. And when I get to the front, I'll attach it in there. And then I'm going to finish felting that to get that curve. And then once that's done, we're going to add our wheels. 
And I haven't done anything in felt yet, but this is basically going to be the wheel right here. We're going to make a little puck out of black. And then we're going to attach it to the white. You can see I've got roving stuffed underneath. So that will come in handy when we're ready to tack the wheel in. Now that the fender's on, or the wheel well, I'm basically attaching the part I added to the existing wool. Just curving it over and just stabbing it down into it so that it becomes one. And we're just blending it together. It's not too bad. And from the front, starting to look good. Just want to maintain that shape. And it looks like it could come in a little at the side here. I'll probably condense that right down and thin it out. It doesn't need to be that thick. As I continue to shape, I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to merge these two pieces together with what was originally there and the new fender. So I'm just going to stab, lightly stab down to merge those shapes. And you don't want to come out the top because you want that to remain perfectly smooth. You're just meshing together the two pieces so that it's seamless. Just take short, shallow jabs. I'm all set up to do the headlight. I've got the pattern piece back on. I've got a piece of gray roving here. Just going to roll it into a ball, just loosely. And I'll just stab it right on. Watch your fingers and just work it in. And it does protrude, so you don't want to flatten it out too much. Just get around the perimeter to get those edges defined. Keep your fingers out of the way. And you're just going to do like a double stab around the perimeter. Now you can remove your pattern. And you've got your headlight. And again, if there's wool that got a little bit too compacted, just take your needle and pull it out to where you need it to be. And have a look. Could have been a little more centered but we can move that over. All I'm going to do is just push it where I want it. So I've gone ahead and I've created tail lights. And it's just basically a gray tube with some red on the end. And I pinned it in horizontally and then tacked all the way around, securing it onto the car. Now I'm ready for the bumpers. So I've got gray roving. I'm just going to split this. So I'm going to fold in the ends here. Just going to make it slightly bigger because once it's felted, it's going to shrink right up. And 
and now I'm just going to create a bit of a concave curve into the roving. I'll turn that around. and shape the other end. And I'll just keep bringing those edges in until I'm happy with the width and the shape. And just keep at it until it's fairly even. I'm just going to keep working those edges till I'm happy with the shape. Now for this particular bumper, there's a black rubber part that runs through the middle of it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black roving. Just bring in the ends. Same with this. So I'm going to continue working this so that I bring it in and felt it more. It's still way too fluffy. And then I've got these two little tubular shapes here. And then I'll attach them to the bumper. And now I'm going to put this black rubber part in just in the center. Just roll it a bit to get it started. You can felt it right between your fingers. I'm just going right down the center. Just taking double jabs. So now I'm going to go along both edges of this black piece just to define the line just along the outside edge okay so I'm going to continue this off camera I'm going to thin down that line substantially so the bumper is now finished it's noticeably thinner. I just built up the middle a little as you can see here. I've applied these which I'll felt in and then the bumper will sit on those. And I've got the back bumper done. Got a little nub in the middle here to secure it. I'll just show you what I did in the back here. Got two little bump outs on the back that the bumper is going to rest on. And I'll attach it. And you can see that it's curved to follow the shape of the car. And that's what we're going to achieve on the back. Now I'm working on the front. And I started out with some roving and folded it in and felted it. And it's still going to come down substantially. And that'll go on the front. So I'm going to do the same thing for the front as I did for the back. I'm going to lie this piece of black roving in for the rubber bumper. And then further shape it. And then eventually what I did was I brought the two ends together at the back and just closed up that seam. So once the black is on, I folded it together, brought these seams together, and stabbed right through to close that up. So I'll show you that as we progress. These two little attachments are going to go on first. 
as you can see on a model car. So I have it pinned down where I want it positioned and I'm using this piece of, it's like a backer rod. You find it at the home improvement store. And I'm just supporting it. And with it in position at the very bottom here, I'm just going to stab those fibers in, the loose fibers that I left. Now I can release that. And these are going to drop down. And then I'm going to continue all the way around to secure it. My camera's in the way, so I can't show you, but it'll go in in the direction that I want it to stand out. And then it'll drop down like that. And that'll be my attachments for the bumper. Now this is for the back, but I'll just show you. And the front will be just slightly smaller, so that will fit right on these bumpers, these little nubs, and then be secured on just like that. But this one's for the back, and this one's for the front. And I'm just starting the black roving to create this little rubber bump out in the middle here. So I'm going to start with the tail and just get some of the fibers down in there to secure it. And then I'll fold it back onto itself. And then I'm going to run the line all the way down and I'm just going to center it and just get some of the fibers down in there. And once it's in position, then you can go back over and you're going to just bring in the sides, which will thicken up the line and it'll further define the edges of it. So before you get too far along, just get some of the fibers in there a little better because as you push them in, it's going to, as you can see, it's going to shorten your piece of roving. And I'll just bring it back into the middle to tuck in those wispy ends. Okay, so now you can pull it off your board and you've got your black rubber bumper in there. Now I'm just going to continue to bring these edges in and to further shape the curve because what I did is I curved it this way first and then I tucked the edges under and then it curved it the other way. So you've got two curves going on in this one little piece. So I'm going to define the bottom edge and now what I'm going to do is come along on the edges of the black just to neaten it up and further secure it. Okay, I'm going to lift that up, turn it around, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other edge of the black, just ensuring that the edges are well secured. And don't forget the ends here. So here again is the bumper, the shape we're trying to accomplish. So I'm just going to show you my technique for bringing in the back. So I'm going to squeeze it together, stab it one way, and then 
watch your fingers, go through the other way. And I'm going to continue that all the way down, just catching a few threads. So you're going to go up and down, all the way down, the entire length. And you're just catching a few threads, and you're just actually sort of going in and out of the same hole a couple of times. You can use your needle to flatten that out and then squeeze. And keep pinching and then catch those fibers. And when we're done, we're going to flatten it out. So that's going to substantially narrow, and then it's also going to bring it in and thicken it up, and then we'll be able to flatten this out once it's together, and then we're going to produce this other curve here. The seam of the front bumper is now closed and I just lightly went along. You don't want to go through to the other side. You don't want to ruin the black. Just lightly tamped it down. It's looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to give it a little bit of a curve by condensing the fibers underneath and I'm curling it as I go. Don't want to do the front too much. The front isn't as curved as the back. And before you get too far along, just test it out. If you don't want to overdo it, sometimes it's just hard to undo if you go too far with it. Okay, that looks pretty much bang on to me. So the last thing to do is to add just a little bit of um, a square oblong shape here for the license plate. Much the same as I did on the back here. This is just another little bump out. So I'm just going to get um, a little bit of grey and we're going to create that. I'm just breaking it up and stacking it. I'll just place that down and just draw an oblong shape. I'm going to fold that in Same with the other edge. And then the sides. Sometimes you have to go back over your line to be able to fold it back. And just hold those fibers with your finger. And felt the ends in. Now lift your shape. still pretty fluffy. So we're going to bring the edges in and clean it up. And it's easier to turn the work as you go. Lift and turn. And as you felt the fibers in, you're going to thicken it up. Okay, so this is going to be the license plate and I'm going to further felt that down but it's going to sit right in the center, like that. We're going to be doing this uh, door runner here. And I've got the black already started. I started out with much longer pieces of roving. And I used my pattern piece to get the shape and then I folded it into the center on all sides. Now for this, I've got my pattern shape down there. I'm going to place it into the center. And I just want to produce this gentle curve. So I'm going to stab very lightly towards the center to condense those fibers. And this will neaten out the edge. 
and then produce that curve. And you can see the curve edge that that produces. Then you're going to lift up the piece, turn it around, and you want to do the same thing on the other side. Get some of those threads out of there. Place your pattern piece. This time you're going to line it up against the edge that you just felted. And then you're going to bring this side in in exactly the same way. And follow along this gentle curve shape. And you can see those edges just coming in nicely. Okay, and then we're going to lift it. And then we're going to come along and just condense some of the fibers in the center. It's getting awfully puffy, so we have to felt that down a little. Okay, so this still has a long way to go, so we're just basically going to continue bringing it in in the same manner. And if you find they get sh too short, you can stretch it out a little. And then just continue bringing those edges in. And again, turn it around. Same thing on the other side. Now in the end, we're going to felt this down quite a lot because we only need just the black part there. But I do want to be able to attach it first on the underside. So that if that's the piece, and it's not quite done yet, I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. It's going to be wrong side facing you. You're going to be felting it along the line of where you want it placed. And then flip it down. And then that's what's going to allow the piece to stand out. And then you'll further felt that in through the edges to secure it. And then you'll have your runner. Now right now it's way too wide. As you can see I've got the running boards complete. They're nicely felted. So what I've done is taken one of my pieces and I'm gonna pin it right onto the side here. Then I'm just gonna tack it at the corners just so I can remove the pin. And then what's going to happen is it'll be felted all along the bottom and then I'll pull this down and then further secure it in and then we'll have our running board. So I'm going to do this on the other side so that I can get them equally placed. And again, I'll pin that. Just check to see if it's at the same height as the other side. And again, I'm just going to tack in at the corner and then the other corner. Then I can remove the pin some of this fluff out of here and then just double check just eyeball it again then I can go ahead and continue all the way along and before I get too far along I'll just pull it down just to see how it looks and I think that looks pretty good and then once it gets filtered in, it'll come much closer to the body. It won't be as wide as that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do the same to the other side. If you work on each piece equally, then you can be assured that you'll get pretty good consistency on both sides. We'll just check that out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to secure it permanently. Okay, then when I pull it down, I'm going to go at it at an angle. And then I'm going to do this off camera because it's really hard to see with the camera in front. But then I'll come in through the sides here and then just tack it right through the body. Just to keep it in position. And that's how it's going to look. And I'll do the same to the other side. Right now it's still against the car, but we'll do the same and bring that down. So that runner's looking pretty good. And once that's in, I've got my bumpers here pinned and ready to go. And then what I'll do is I'll take my needle and I'll secure it right through here into these two bump outs. I've already secured one side, so that's attached. And I've got my pin in the other side here, and I'll come along and do the same. Secure it on this side, and then my bumper will be good to go. And I'll do the same in the front as well as the back. And at the back, I've got my pins in, ready to go. And again, right through these little nub outs. And that'll be done, and then we'll be ready for wheels. Now that the running boards are on, we're going to do just one last step to finish it off. And that's just to go through the wheel wells here into the running board so that it's secured on the ends here without this gap. And then again at the other side, come through here into the black, watch your fingers and you can feel the fibers pulling in. Now you're going to want to do that at a few different places just all the way along, right under here and right under here. Just so it bridges that gap. Then they'll be done. I've got four tufts of black wool here and we're going to start on the wheels and I'm going to have some gray on the inside with the black tire around the outside perimeter of it. So I've got my tuft of gray. I'm going to split this into four. Try to get them roughly even. And I'll split this in two. So I think for the wheels I'm going to try to do it on a toothpick. I'll roll the center first. I'm rolling the interior portion of the wheel onto a toothpick. We're going to get more or less this shape. Try to keep it in one place. Just going to felt it on. I'll pull that one off later. Let's roll this last one. Sometimes it can be hard to get it started. But just squeeze it tight. I'm rolling this towards me. Roll it tight as you go. Try to keep a square edge here at the bottom by pinching your fingers in.
And I'll just keep rolling that just to felt the ends. So you're just going to push it off this toothpick. Then you'll end up with this tubular shape. This is the last wheel. And after taking it off the toothpick, I'm just going to hold it down with the darning needle. And then stab around the needle. I'm going to do that to the other side too. And then I'll just squeeze it and then go right around the perimeter. And then just eyeball it and make sure it's the same height as your others. Go straight up and down so you don't get your fingers. Alternately, you can use your needle. Okay, so when you're fairly happy, we're going to add the black roving. in the ends here. And before you get too far, just tack that in. That'll give you some resistance as you twist it on. Now you can just pull fairly tight as you roll. I like to tack it every so often. And just keep rolling until you reach the end. And if you feel it's pulling away from you too much, just tack it as you go. You'll get a feel for this. Especially after the three that came before. So I'm now at the end. Just get those ends tacked in. So I'm going to go right down the middle. And I'll put it onto my board. And I'll go right down the sides. Starting at the edge here. It'll want to roll right off the edge. So go straight down right around the edges here. And again from the edge right down the sides. Make sure you're maintaining the round shape here. Go right through the edge. and then down. Making sure that you maintain the round shape. Now you're going to flip it over and you're going to do exactly the same thing to the other side.
Felting the edges down the side, from the edge again, down the side. Continue that all the way around. We're just trying to maintain this tube shape. And again, you're going to come in around the sides, around the edges, because it's going to want to fall right off the edge. And in the middle. Now we're going to just take that little bit of black and come all the way around the edge to ensure it's well attached. And again, around the outer perimeter. And in the middle. And then you're going to start at the edge and come right down the sides. And you're doing this at an angle. You can see the direction of my needle. Start at the edge, come down the side, right to the bottom, come back to the top, down the side, right to the bottom, And just around the edge again, in the middle. Now to finish this off, I'm going to felt right along the black, from one edge to the other. Just watch any stray strands. Get them out when you see them, because then they'll felt right in. It doesn't look like much now, but once it gets felted, you'll notice a bit of a blob. Okay, continue along from one edge to another. And then just eyeball it, and if you feel that it's not consistent in a certain place, just bring that back in. Whoops, man overboard. Okay, and there's my four wheels. I'm feeling that that one's a little small, so I'll probably just build it up with a little more black roving. Seems a little small in comparison to the rest. So just work on getting them consistent. And I've got tufts of additional black roving here got four equally sized and just smooth that out once again on the perimeter to build up the black on each of them. And then I'll felt that in. So I'm going to do that off camera and I just want to show you what I've done here. So in the space where the wheel's going to go. It used to be white. That was my that was my base of roving that we put in initially into the um, knit form that we did. So I just filled in with black so that when the wheels go on the white won't be so distracting. So they'll sit like that so that'll be our last step. And then perhaps some finessing. I might want to do a door handle. I don't know if I'm going to do some windshield wipers in the windows here. We'll see. But it's really up to you, the amount of detail that you want to put into it. I've done the second layer of black. And you can see it's a little more felted, compact, condensed. So I'm going to continue with the other three here. I'm just winding the wheel. And as I go, I'm just going to tack it in 
every once in a while along the way. Continue going. Okay, so now that that's on, we're basically going to do the same steps as we did before. Now this isn't something that you can do while watching TV because you really have to pay attention to where your needle's at. Can't do anything that's going to distract you other than give your full attention to it. It's important to turn as you go so that you get even consistency. You want to maintain that circular shape. Now we're going to do something a little different. I want to compact the black part of the wheel. So I'm going to lift it up like this. And I'm going to take my needle at an angle and I'm going to come in just under the gray and I'm going to like stab down into the wheel as I turn. I'll just leave the needle in place and take a few jabs. I'm not inserting it and then taking it out and going back in. I'm just placing it, taking a few jabs, moving on, turning the work, all the way around. And that'll compact all of the black fibers around the center. Now turn it back on its side and once again come around the perimeter flattening that out and that'll condense it really nicely. Now we're going to turn it around and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. And uh, so basically you're not likely to get the same consistency on both sides so when we put the wheel onto the car we're going to take the best one and I think maybe um, once all four wheels are done, I might just go over the center with some gray again. And then when you see little wisps, I've got some gray in there. Just pull them out as you go. Just so that you don't contaminate the color there. And then continue on from one end to another. You'll be able to feel when that's done. It won't be as spongy as it was. Okay, I can feel that's still a little too spongy. And you can see it's still bigger than this one. So I'm going to continue felting to bring those fibers in to compact them even more. And then we'll end up with the same shape and size. So I'm going to complete this off camera. I'm going to do these other two wheels. When we come back, um, I'm going to think about whether I'm going to extend the center of this gray area. Just looking at my little model here, um, the gray is quite a bit bigger than this. As a last step to the wheels, I have some tufts of gray here. I'm going to put my pattern piece over the wheel. Just going to roll this into a loose ball just between my fingers. I'll secure that with the darning needle. I'm just going to start to go around the perimeter. secure that roving. Just bring in the loose ends. And then continue all the way around the perimeter. Okay, you can remove the needle. Just continue to bring all those loose ends in. Just leave it on until 
it's fairly round. Take it off again. And as you can see, we've got a fairly good round shape, but the ends are still fluffy. So we'll just continue to go around the perimeter, keep it balanced. If you feel you're losing the shape, just put your pattern piece back on and that'll help guide you. Now come around the perimeter and turn the work as you go. And that'll neaten the sides. And just make sure you've got it even. That's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do from here is flatten the middle and I want to achieve just a little bit of this indent here in the center. So I'm just going to keep at it, just coming around the center of that. You can continue coming around the perimeter to keep your shape. I'm going around the outside edges again. So now that the center is nicely felted, like I mentioned before, I want to create a little bit of that indentation around the center of the wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in at an angle from the center, just a little bit back, and I'm going to felt outward as I turn the work. That's going to create a little bit of a rim around this gray part here. Keep your fingers out of the way. Point the needle away from your finger, so you don't want to point into your finger because you'll stab yourself. So keep your fingers clear, and you're coming in at an angle, and you're going right in between your fingers into this empty space here so that you can't stab yourself. Turn the work as you go. Now I don't know if you can see this on camera, but you've got just the beginning of this indentation around the perimeter. I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm doing the same thing, but I'm kind of pointing down. It's a little bit easier to get it from this angle. Keeping about a millimeter or so away from the edge. Okay, now I'm going to continue to compress in the middle. And I'm not going to come into this area, that's one millimeter, because you're going to flatten that and you don't want to flatten that. I'm just going to compress the middle so that you have the edges proud of the center, which you'll continue to flatten all the way around. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can continue to refine that edge. If you want to further define 
the outer edge of this gray section here. You can add some additional roving. You don't want this part too fluffy. You're going to roll it between your fingers. And then you're going to start around the perimeter, tucking it in as you go. And you're just going to go all the way around, and that's going to allow you to build up this outer edge. Just take out one small section at a time. You can't wind it around and then tack it in because you need that slack as you go. This isn't adding a huge amount of fiber, but as you come around again, I'll just keep winding it, it will build it up. And then you can continue to depress the center to make it stand out even more. Okay, I'm continuing with the second wheel. We've got our first one done, and as you can see, It's nicely depressed around the center. Now it's time to complete the wheels. And as you can see, they are all done. We haven't done the back side because that's not necessary. So you're just going to lay it flat on the surface and then bump the wheel up against the inside of the rim. Then if you like, you can pin it in place. Then you can turn the car around. And we're going to do the same thing with the other two wheels here. Just position them. Make sure they're flat and touching the surface. And then go ahead and pin it. Once the wheels are all pinned and they're flat against the surface, we're going to take our felting needle and come in horizontally and just tack right through the body of the car. Now try to keep these stabs within the rim that you established here because you don't want to squish down the rim of the wheel. So you're just going to stab all around until those fibers catch. Then once it's firm, you can remove that pin. And then what you want to do also is come in from the back side here. You can see the black that we put into um, the wheel rim here and push into the wheel from the back side catching the fibers in. Make sure that your needle is pointed down so you don't accidentally jab into your finger and just continue sort of all the way around grabbing fibers from the back and in from the front until it's good and solid. Then we're going to continue with our other wheels here until they're all held in place. So the next time you see this little guy, we're going to be all done and he's going to be ready for his reveal.